everybody. It's so good to see you. Just letting everybody come in from around the world. I can't, let's see, I can't see the messages. Let me see if I can see them. Oh, there we go. Opened it up on the side. So now I can see comments. That's awesome. So if you have questions, I might be able to see it over there on the chat. Otherwise, I have Maddie with Michael here to help me out. Um, so if you don't know me, my name is Paige Evans, and I love scrapbooking and anything and everything to do with paper and photos and stickers and embellishments and all those fun things. This is my second Zoom class with Michaels. If you joined me for the first one, uh, it was in February, I think. We created a, a smaller explosion box, a Valentine's Day themed one. And so I'm gonna wave to you and then let's switch over to the projects that we are working on today, the project. Perfect, there we go. Okay, so this was the box that we made last time. It's one of the smaller explosion boxes. There are two sizes, small and large, and this one has the heart corners. So in the first class, I demonstrated how to cover these hearts and all of the different sections. So if you are curious about how to cover your box, you know, you buy this box in the store and you're like, well, now what? Well, in the first class, I show you exactly how to uh, cover all of the sides. And this is, again, the smaller box. And one of the things that I did to help make the covering process go a little bit faster, because I feel like covering the sides is what takes the longest. And we, we just wanna start adding all the pictures and embellishments, right? So I did design a cut file that you can use with your Cricut or your Silhouette, and it will cut all of the papers for covering all of the lids, all of the sides and all of the edges for you. So this is the finished box um, that we'll work on little bits and pieces of here today. And it's called an explosion box because <laughs> You saw it exploded. So it's got three layers, the large one does. So you get three explosions. And one other thing that I love about this larger format is in between the layers, you've got a good half inch. So you can get really dimensional and thick with your embellishments. Technically, you could even build up this center part, like put a cupcake inside of it when you deliver it to whoever you give your box to, or maybe you keep your box for yourself. I definitely create projects and then just keep them for myself. Um, so we, I want to first demonstrate something that um, I have done to all of the papers on this box. Let me grab a lid so you can see, I'll hold it up. Maybe you can see, I have added machine stitching to all of the papers. Now this is definitely an added extra step that takes a long time, but I, I just love the results of machine stitching or and or hand stitching on my projects. I feel like it gives it that handmade touch, you know? So let me grab my demo box that we're gonna work on because this one's already finished. Actually, I'm gonna move this over to this way. I'm going to grab the box. So here is the box. I've already covered all of the sides except for the one. And uh, before I demo how I machine stitch around this, this is a, da a daughter. This is a box that I want to give to my daughter uh, for her birthday. And it's not coming up until July. But the products in the end cap at Michael's, a lot of them have a birthday theme. So it's really awesome to create these for people with birthdays. So you've got this best yay ever. Um, there's glitter papers, there's sprinkles like confetti. And um, that's kind of what I was going for here was just an overall super fun, happy birthday vibe. And then the last layer, because there are flowers and I always love to include flowers on my projects. That's why the, this last layer is in flowers. And similar to the Valentine Day, Valentine's Day box, when I was adhering the papers, I was mindful of what they would look like when it was splayed open like this. And you can see 
that there's just a rainbow of colors. I don't have two of the same colors next to each other. I've got yellow, this is kind of an ombre, it blue, pink, and then the next layer, different colors. So it kind of rotates and you get that overall rainbow vibe. And that's something that is very much my style. So here is what the paper looks like when I just cut it with my Cricut or Cameo. This is the largest layer with the flowers. You can see it's got this little notch. If you don't have a cutting machine, you can easily use a ruler and cut it out with a paper cutter. And again, that's where the first video comes out, um, comes in really handy to see how to actually cut if you don't have a cutting machine. So the paper was cut with the machine and there you go. That, I mean, easy. It's already the exact same size that you need it to be and you can just glue it in place and keep gluing the rest of the flaps onto it. But I did wanna add that little extra step of machine stitching. And I see there are some questions about the, sh the sewing machine. And guess what? I never sew on fabric. Well, never say never. I have sewed on fabric before, but this sewing machine that I use, let's see if I can bring it in. It's a uh, Brother LX2500. And it was just the cheapest one that I could find, um, the cheapest one that I could find at the store. And it's 12 years old now. And so I have everything plugged in with extension cords. So we're going to see this. Okay. We, the pedal is not reaching. There we go. Okay. So here is my paper. I use a regular needle. If you were to go to the store and buy replacement needles, it's just generic needles. And for this project, I'm only using white thread. Let's see if you can see it in the view. It's white Coates and Clark thread, dual duty, just all purpose, nothing fancy. So I begin, you can begin on any corner, but I do like to start in the corners. And so that, uh, let's see, you can probably see the edges of the thread hanging off here at the top, but I'm gonna start down here on, on a bottom corner. So you put the paper in, you put the foot down. I'm gonna do a basic running stitch and just start stitching. And then turn it. The straight edges are easy because you're just going straight. But once you get to the notched part, I just slow it down a little bit. So I'm about an eighth inch away. And I know, I'm sorry, it's hard to see from this angle, but I will bring it up and show you when it's done. So I'm rotating it and doing a couple stitches around the notched part and then going a few more, rotating. And one thing that I always like to stress in my scrapbooking and projects is, sorry, it's so loud, just a sec. Last one, straight down. Okay, so I'm gonna trim that off and I'll show you what I'm about to say. Where are my scissors? Here they are. Trim that off. I'm gonna set this aside and show you up close what that looks like. So one thing that I try and stress in my scrapbooking and projects is embrace the imperfections. You can see it's definitely not straight. This line is a little wonky and I am a-okay with that. I, I love not having things perfect. I think it just adds to that handmade touch. A machine didn't make this, a robot didn't make this, a human made this, and there are imperfections. Okay. So with that, I added machine stitching to all of the papers and gonna add the one that I just did onto the box. Add some glue around the edges. The closer you can get to the edges, the less wear and tear your box will have. And by that, I mean, let's see if I can grab a lid. The adhesive here, I didn't get it very close to the edges, so it's coming off. So I will go back through with liquid glue, or you can use super sticky double-sided tape to make sure that these, these edges really stick down. 
There you go. Thanks for adding the link to the products. Yep, these are all products that you can find in Michael's stores. It's a cute little end cap with, I think there were around 34 products in this collection and they all coordinate together. Okay, the next thing that I want to do is I know sequin shaker pockets are like all the rage and I actually hadn't made one, but I did make one using glitter and the transparency papers in the in the six by six paper pads. There are transparency papers. So I want to show you how to make one of these. And in the last layer of this explosion box, they are all pockets. So it's really cute and fun that you can just slide the sequin shaker pockets right in. So you can make one for all four pockets or just the one, you know, it's up to you. So to make this pocket, I grabbed two pieces of the transparencies. I have a purple one and a pink one. When they come together, it still creates kind of a pinky purple color. So, you know, you have to know your colors because these are see-through. So when they blend together, it's gonna create a whole different color. And then I need my ruler because I need to measure how big the pocket should be. I'm gonna make it a little bit smaller than the actual pocket. So let's see, if the pocket is five inches, I'm gonna go ahead and trim my paper to four and a half by Five. Let's see what happens at four and a half by five. I'll do that to both of these transparencies. This is a Fiskars paper trimmer. So four and a half is right here. It's in between an 11 and 12 centimeters if you use um, centimeters. And then rotate it, I said by five. So that's just about 13 centimeters. I'm gonna tuck it in the pocket really quick just to see if that is a good size. Cool, yeah, so you can see the transparency is sticking up just a little bit in this notch. So you can see that there is something there. So I will trim this purple paper to the same width, which was four and a half. And it, you saw me rotate it. It doesn't matter which side. It's not a double-sided pattern paper. It's see-through, so it doesn't matter which side is showing. Four and a half by five. Cool. Set that aside. Grab my paper that's tucked in the pocket. Okay. Now, if you have a sewing machine, an easy way to connect these together would be to machine stitch around the edges, but I will show you a different option is if you have super thin double-sided sticky tape. So this is only about an eighth of an inch wide and you wanna put it along three edges and I'm going as close to the edge as I can without having the adhesive stick out from the edge because that could just get sticky. I'm going to line, I'll line the edges first and then peel off the backing. And this is yep, going to create that glitter pocket. I missed a little teeny tiny bit there. And we, what do we know about glitter? If you have glitter, it's going to get everywhere, right? So I don't want any holes where the glitter could potentially fall out. So I'm going to make sure to cover up every single little space. Okay, so I've got the three, three sides covered so far. Um, you know what I just realized though is, do I wanna put the fourth one up here and put that on or pour it in? I'll just do it this way. I made the sample a long time ago. <laughs> I've forgotten my exact steps, guys. Let's see, hello everybody. Some people from Washington. I lived in Redmond, Washington from, we moved there when I was 10 and my parents still live there. So I love the Pacific Northwest and all the trees and the green and yes, the rain. I love the rain too, but I, I really love sunshine. Okay, so I peeled off the adhesive backing and I am going to carefully place this on top. 
and this is going to create the pocket. Okay, make sure you line it up. In, I don't want to say exact because what did I just say about imperfections and embracing that, but as close as you can, line it up, and then we have a pocket. Cool. So there are three packages of different kinds of glitter in this end cap. This one has light pink, mint, dark blue, and gold sprinkles. And there are two other sets of sequins, not sequins, glitter, this is glitter. And so you can just pick and choose your favorites to pour in here. I wanted some contrast. So I'm choosing the darker blue glitter and pour a little bit in there. Cool, and then shake it around. I don't need to shake it around quite yet. And then I'm also going to add in some of the gold sequins. Not sequins, I keep saying sequins. Glitter. They're shaped a little differently, these ones. They're like long skinny sprinkles, which reminds me of birthdays, so it's kind of perfect. It's a birthday themed box, so let's just make everything we add to it birthday themed. Okay, so once I have the glitter poured inside, I am going to add one final strip of adhesive. And I think I probably should have done this before so that I could just tear off the um, adhesive backing. So if you're going to make this at a later time, add the adhesive to all four sides so that it's easier to peel off the backing instead of trying to tuck it in here. But you know, it all works out in the end. So I'm tearing off or peeling off the adhesive backing and there we go. We've got a glitter shaker pocket. And then you can add a photo on top or what I did is there are three different packages of die cuts. And so I just wanted to create kind of a focal point. And so I added some adhesive, stick it on. And thanks is a cute sentiment if you were giving this as a thank you gift. But since it's a birthday box, I wanna add something kind of more related to that. And so in the stickers, there's a package of stickers with 52 pieces. One of the sentiments says hooray and in all the colors, which I love. So I'm just carefully gonna cover up that thanks part. Cool. What do you think? Easy peasy. And then we can just tuck it in. All right, I have glitter everywhere. <laughs> I'm wiping it off. Okay. All right, looking at my cheat sheet of things I want to show you, I, um, so the next step that I usually do when I'm making these boxes, once I have everything covered, I print my photos. I gotta find my stack of pictures. I used to get my pictures printed at Costco, but they don't um, do that anymore. <laughs> so I've been printing at home. I have a Canon Pro 100 printer. It's a wide format printer, it prints up to 13 inches wide. And so I just print my photos at home and I always trim them out, leaving a white border. Because my backgrounds tend to be quite busy, I love having the contrast of this white border so that the photos will still pop off. And what I then do is just kind of try and figure out where I want the photos to be. So I'm looking at my original box so I don't have to think too hard. These are all photos of my daughter Jane and cute things she does. So there's cute pockets up here in the front. I'm just gonna tuck photos in and this one goes in here. So I love how it's interactive. Okay, here's Jane in Michael's in front of the end cap. <laughs> kind of meta, huh? Tuck that one in here, oh, in the yellow, yep, yeah, yellow, get into the round. And then one more right here. Oh, that's a chipboard frame. I'll show that a little bit later. So um, you can leave all of these edges plain as is, but something that I like doing is adding, yeah, a little extra. I just always like adding as many details as I can. So this is an assorted trim package and there are three different trims. 
And what I like to do to decorate these edges is to glue them in place. And I'm searching for my liquid glue. Here it is. Any liquid glue I think would do as long as it's fast drying. This is just one that I got from American Crafts. It's called Sticky Thumb and it does get jammed a little bit. So I always have a needle close by so that I can repoke the hole for the glue to come out. So for this yellow diagonal edge, I'm going to remove the photo just so I don't get any adhesive on it. And mint sequin. These are sequins, so I can say sequins. This cute sequin mint trim. Let me find the end of it. Let's see. There it is. It's got tucked under. Okay. So I'm going to roughly place it along the edge to see how long it needs to be. And that looks pretty good. So I'm going to trim it off right there. And now I'm going to grab my liquid glue. And because I did do the machine stitching, I think that that creates a nice um, place to add the liquid glue. If you don't do the machine stitching, just place the liquid glue close to the edge, but not all the way to the edge. And then the sequin trim has got, it's kind of double sided. So one side is the thicker thread and one side is more sequiny. So I'm going to put the thicker thread side down onto the glue. And if it gets twisted, you can just carefully twist it back. Right along the edge. Uh oh. It needs to dry quicker. Maybe a hot glue gun would also work really well in this case. <laughs> okay, work, <laughs> stay. Paige, do you have time for a couple of questions? I sure do. So uh, people were wondering specifically where those uh, see-through acetate papers, which paper packs those were coming from? Um, they, these ones come from the six by six pad. I can't, I can't remember the exact name. There are four six by six paper pads. One has only glitter cardstock paper. Okay. So that's this, these ones, one only has the glitter. One has pattern papers with foiling details. Um, and one has these transparencies in the back. So if that, if that person has that specific question, I can definitely look it up after the class. It's just my supplies are in a different house. That's fine. I linked the page with all of the Explosion Box products, and I see those different paper pads in there. So if you're interested in finding it, it's uh, the one that is marked six by six paper pad by Recollections, and the rest of them have the glitter or the foil or whatever in the title. Perfect. And, and then, then yes. We did have one other question. You spoke briefly earlier about having some templates for the Cricut cutouts. Where can we get those? Uh, those are, they're in my Etsy shop. So it's, I think, two or three dollars just for the, the templates. And you can use it on any, any cutting machine that you have. OK, thank you. OK, so I'm just repeating for all of the Diagonal pockets, Ooh, remember, take out your photos before you do this so you don't get glue on them. I saw somebody said to run it through the Xyron to make it sticky, that's a good idea. Any way to make it sticky, but luckily this adhesive dries pretty quickly. I'm just, I'm just trying to go a little faster than I should. Be a little more patient as you're making this and here we go. Once that dries, I'll trim off the excess. There is one more kind of trim. It's this paper pink round circles. And for here, this one, I'm kind of doing a tone on tone look. So we've got the pink paper and I've got the pink circles. So I will trim off that piece. There are one, two, three, four, five, six circles that I'm trimming off. And then once again, 
just making a line of adhesive. So this just adds more character, more kinds of textures, and the more of those kinds of things I can include, the better. It's just, it makes it so fun and interactive. Okay. So I will let that dry, and then once it dries, trim off the excess. For this last pocket, since there's only three different kinds of trim and there's um, four pockets, what I did was embellish it with the mint bow paper clips in this embellishments pack. So it's got enamel dots, enamel hearts that are glittery, some gold stars. They're a little thicker for more dimension. And then it's got, it has more than these in the package. I've already used some. So if you were to buy this brand new, it would come with more than just uh, these six. But let me take them out, crinkle, crinkle. I took three of these bows and I simply slid them onto the edge of this diagonal pocket. Let me find the back. There we go, one. To open it up. It's really thick right here because of all the paper and sewing. So I'm just opening up the paper clip so it slides on easier. Try again. And this way, this, uh, this diagonal pocket doesn't get left out, right? I mean, we embellished the other three. We want to embellish the fourth one as well. And I think these bow paper clips are just the cutest. So there we go. That is how I add some embellishing with the trims and paper clips. The next thing I want to show you is a balloon bouquet. Cool. So I had my, well, actually this wasn't a posed photo. That was a different photo where I'd done the same technique, but my daughter was literally jumping for joy. And so I thought it, it just reminded me of her holding a balloon, a bouquet of balloons. And so using various products, I was able to create this balloon bouquet and it just folds up, you know, no big deal because there's a lot of space in between. So let me show you how I did this. I'll grab the photo first. And this was done in the orange pocket. And the photo of her jumping. It's a larger one, so I cut different sizes of, no, it's not a large one. I cut different sizes of photos. Larger ones can go on these back flaps. Smaller ones can go in the pockets in the front, and then medium ones can go in the middle flap. There it is. So it's not a large one, it's gonna go on the bottom. And for attaching photos onto the glitter paper, I like to use foam squares. I definitely use a lot of foam squares when I'm making these boxes, again, because you can, because there's so much space and room to add super thick and dimensional embellishments, I just go for it. Okay. So I'm putting the foam squares on the back of the photo. Press it in place. And then throughout, the products, there are various balloons. So let's see, they're in my pile. There is a package of birthday die cuts. That's what it's called, birthday die cuts. And they have a lot of birthday themed icons and embellishments. So from there, I pulled out these three balloons. And this package has dimensional and puffy stickers. You can see it's got two balloons here that are also, look at there's sequin shaker balloons. So that gives me five balloons, so stick them down. There's one up here. This one I'm gonna put here. If you want more contrast between the balloons and this paper, you can choose something a little less busy or you can do some mixed media. 
such as adding white gesso onto the background and letting it dry, and that will make the colors pop more. But if you like the busyness, then you don't even need to worry about it. You can just keep going. So on these ones, I'm also going to add foam squares just for the sake of um, hurrying. I'm only adding one foam square right now, but if you are making this, you probably want to add two foam squares. To celebrate, and I'm kind of doing them at angles as if they were naturally floating away. You know, balloons don't always stay straight up and down. And so I'm trying to create a more realistic, realistic effect by having the balloons directions as if they are floating away. But you do want to have all of the bottoms of the balloons facing down. I mean, I guess you could have a balloon going upside down, but you know, I'm just trying to go for the realistic look. Okay, so from that same uh, assorted trim pack. Just want to grab the baker's twine and create balloon strings. So I'm just roughly going to measure from the her hand up to the balloon and then trim it. And since this one is a sticker, if you just tuck it underneath the sticker, it should hold it in place. If you want to reinforce it with hot glue or more glue, you totally can. But since it's a sticker, it just holds it. And then let's see, am I gonna use, I think once I've done all of the strings, I'll add some liquid glue there and put them all in place. But I will continue cutting the strings. And since this one, isn't a sticker, you can use a glue dot. That's a good idea. I'll grab a glue dot. So any kind of adhesive dot, or maybe a, you could also use your hot glue gun or liquid glue. This is easy and fast. So I'm just adding a little dot to the end of the thread and then tucking it under the balloon, that bottom part of the balloon. That's where the balloon string comes out. Repeat. So if, since I'm just repeating this, are there any other questions that I can answer as I am doing these balloon strings? The puppy stickers are so cute. Yes. And yet yeah, um, this video will be uploaded to the Michaels YouTube channel this week. So if you're just jumping on or if you missed something or you want to rewatch over and over and over, <laughs> it will be available on the Michaels YouTube channel. The printer, the picture printer, it's a wide format printer. It's a Canon Pro 100. Let's see, I'm getting another glue dot to glue this balloon string down. Tucking it under, which one did I just measure from? Yep, the white balloon with the polka dots. I've done this type of, um, this kind of idea where my daughter was holding, holding things recently on a scrapbook layout. Instead of balloons though, I did hearts, layered hearts. So it was kind of the same gist, right? You know, if she's holding heart-shaped balloons and it's just fun. And that one, I actually did have her pose. I said, hey, Jane, come stand in front of this wall and stick out your hand as if you're holding something. So please tell me I'm not the only one who makes their kids or anybody pose just for a specific idea they have in their head. Okay. Uh, question was, will there be instruction sheets, templates available or just the video? I have posted instructions on my blog as well as links to the you know where you can get the SVGs or you can hand cut. I'm trying to grab another glue dot. And then I do have other YouTube videos on my own channel flipping through these boxes so you can get even more ideas. Okay this last balloon oh this one is a sticker I didn't need to add a glue dot well we've got some reinforcements then.
Who else dresses their kids to match pattern paper? Me. I definitely, definitely, definitely do that. Okay, I have all my balloon strings. <laughs> I'm look. I'm just looking at myself in the in the computer and how this looks. That's kind of fun to see it in a different screen. Okay, so I've got the balloons. I can pull up the whole flap like that. I am actually going to tie the balloon strings into a little bow. And just gonna tie it off. I need three hands for this. I need my little helper. Hold on, gotta concentrate for a sec. Okay. And then I don't know if I'll be able to make a bow. I might have cut the string too short. It'll just be a teeny tiny bow. There we go. And then I'll use, I'm actually going to use a glue dot. I think that'll hold better. Instead of liquid glue gluing the balloon strings down, I'm going to use a dot just on the back of the knot. Have it coming from her hand. There we go. Balloon bouquet. And the oops, that just fell out because again, there's so much space in there. There's no problems when you're closing it up. All of these thick balloons, can you see how thick those puffy balloon stickers are? A-okay, you don't have to worry about it getting squished. That's what I love about these boxes. Okay, next on my little cheat sheet that I've got here that I wanna show you is an accordion pull out. What I mean by that is, hold on, I gotta clean up. Who else cleans up after every project? <laughs> I do. Having everything out like this, I'm like, hey. <laughs> making messes. Okay. <laughs> Where is the accordion pullout? Here it is. I'm move some things over so you can see. Um, if you're if you're like me, you have a really hard time narrowing down photos. Look, I just noticed I have two photos in this pocket and a great way to include even more would be tucked into these pockets or well, you can create an accordion fold out. So here it's tucked under this flower that's cut in half. And then if you pull the top edge, it comes out to reveal three photos. So I wanna show you how I did that using washi tape. First, let me grab these three photos. Okay, so we've got, I guess it doesn't really matter which three photos, but um, I know why I chose these three. It's because they're all pictures of her eating. She has got a sweet tooth for sugar cookies, for sure. So I've got three different pictures of Jane in a you know, food situation. Okay, so if you've got your photos and some washi tape, there are a few, I think there's three different packages of different kinds of washi tape in Michael's in this end cap. And I have just pulled um, some of my favorites. I'm only gonna use two, nope, three. Okay, looking back. So on the front side, I'm going to peel a little bit of washi tape. I can find the end, there it is. And having the photos touch together, put the washi tape across, and then you can just tear it. I'll go back with some scissors in a minute and repeat for the bottom. I'm gonna use a different washi tape. You could make it the same. I just like to add as many different things as I can though. Here's the end. Okay. So making the photos touch, put the washi tape right across the seam. I'm gonna flip it over to add a reinforcement with more washi tape on the back. And this, this just helps, helps it stay together better because you know, washi tape isn't all that sticky. Um, it's temporary adhesive. And so by having it on both the front and back, it's just a little bit more reinforcement. 
And then I'll trim off the excess with my scissors. Okay. All right. Then to do the accordion fold, you just fold it. So it collapses on itself. Now, if you were to stick this down in your box already, I'm trying to see which, which area I have it in. If you were to stick it down like this, just on the back, it kind of splays out, right? It's, it's not sticking down, it's not, we can do better than this. So what we're gonna do is, I am going to adhere the back side onto the page. And then I'm going to center it so there's an even amount. All right, somewhere I have a little flower die cut. So this is a little purple flower die cut from the birthday die cuts. And all I'm gonna do is cut it in half. And I'm going to create a photo. I am not sure what the right terminology would be for this. Photo flaps, little notches, so that it holds the flowers down from the other direction. So using my super sticky double-sided eight inch tape, I'm going to place adhesive on the flat side of the flower. Trim it off. Let's see, I'm looking at the questions. Are the photos three by three or two by two? The ones that I am using right now for this, that is a great question, they are three and a half. Three and a half inches square for this flap. You could make them bigger, you could make them smaller. Just make it your own. Okay, so I am adding the flower just right in the center and repeating for the bottom. Where'd it go? Right there. And my adhesive. All right. One more strip and then this one will go at the bottom. Um, I, if I were to do this again, I might just machine stitch through the flowers. If you have that sewing machine option, just to make sure that they stay in place permanently, you can see in this sample box, you know, the flowers are there, but they're not staying in place all that well. So I would machine stitch them down or use, you know, I don't know, the most amazing adhesive you could ever find, but it does, it does the job right there. So the photos are tucked underneath both sides of the flowers. And then when you're ready, you can simply open it up. And then when you're done, fold it back down and tuck it underneath the flowers. How's that? Cool. All right, uh, there are a package of chipboard frames in the end cap. And one thing that you can do with them is use them, you know, as a frame. So if you have smaller photos, like small school photos, such as this one, I actually did print this one at home, but it was a digital version of her official class photo. And so what I did is grabbed one of the chipboard frames and for contrast, I'm choosing a yellow frame and they are already sticky. So you just peel off the back. You can center it over the subject's cute face, stick it down and then trim off the excess. And that's easy. That's just a fun way to dress up your photos and use all the fun things. I've also, backed the chipboard frames with pattern papers and journaled inside of them. That's another idea for using these. You can use them as a frame and fill in. That's what I've done here in the center. So I can show you how I did that next using another chipboard frame. Okay, and then this one, I just tucked into a pocket right here. So it's interactive. You can tuck it in, you can pull it out. If you wanna create a little tab to make it easier, you can use a little piece of washi tape. Why don't I just do that? 
You could use a little piece of washi tape and stick it down, maybe even staple it in place so it doesn't go anywhere. Stapler was not on the supply list, but I'm just winging it here. We're going rogue, going off my cheat sheet, stapling the washi tape tab in place. So that just creates a little pull and more texture, more color. So you can tuck it there into the pocket. Cool. I hope you're learning some fun, different things you can do with all of these embellishments and supplies. Okay, in the center, so this is kind of the, the highlight of the box, right? I'm gonna rotate it to the same direction that I have my sample. Um, one of the, that was my lids, they just fell off. Okay, one of the um, products is Puffy Photo Corners, and I love adding these onto the corners, and especially here in the middle. So I think these are dry now, you can trim off the excess so they're not overlapping anything here. Okay, so I'm gonna add some purple floral photo corners. You can either go all the way to the edge or you can bring them in a tiny bit. That's what I've done so that you can still see the pattern paper poking out from the corners. Just a personal, personal preference. Okay, and then I have some holographic doilies somewhere. I see them, I see them. Okay. Okay, and again, in the center, you could really build it up. How tall is this? It is three and a half inches. You could make your embellishments three and a half inches tall here in the center. And like I said, that'd be such a cute place for a cupcake. Um, but I don't have any cupcakes, so I'm just going to keep embellishing. And there is a package of holographic doilies in this end cap, so I grabbed one, and I am going to use foam squares to attach it into the center. And I am going to cover up the center, actually, so I can put one right in the middle. Space these out a little more. Did I get all of the whiteness? Yep, okay. So this one's just gonna go right in the middle. And again, you can see the adhesive coming through the center right here, but I'm covering it up with, guys, my desk, seriously. <laughs> Woo, okay, here it is. This package of the dimensional birthday embellishments. There's this rosette with the pink flower, and I will add that into the center because I can, because it's thick and that's okay. From the same chipboard sticker package, there is a frame. So I'm just kind of trying to create a colorful layered cluster here in the center so that it's just all kinds of cute when she goes ahead and opens it. And sticking that around. There is a package of stickers. It's got 71 stickers and it includes flowers and banners and birthday themed cuteness and one of the stickers oh it's not the same let's see what did i use there yeah it's a sticker okay so here is a oh there's another package there's another set of stickers in here there it is like where's waldo trying to find the things to use the same things so here in this package all from the same package, you get one, two, three, four, five, six pages of birthday stickers. And this is the banner sticker that I want to use. It's got five pennants in all the colors and it just really helps tie all of the different colors that I've used so far together. So I'm tucking this right under the flower. There we go. Okay. This is my daughter's favorite item from this end cap when we went into the Michaels store and I had her point out what her favorite thing is. It's these heart paper clips. They look like candy, but don't eat them. And here I'm going for the tone on tone look. So I've grabbed a pink heart 
and I want to slide it onto the pink flap. A yellow heart, I want to slide onto this yellow flap. Just be careful of your trims if you've glued those on. For this purpley, purpley ombre flap, I'm tucking on a pink heart paper clip. And then for the blue section, adding a blue heart paper clip. And this creates texture. I think that's the best way I can explain it. I love doing color on color to help those colors pop. And I've got a few more die cuts that I want to adhere and that will be everything on my list. Okay. So fun little things like this. It's just a happy birthday cake stand. You can either adhere it somewhere or to make these pockets again more interactive, you can just tuck it into the pocket. That way when when whoever goes through the box, they can take out the photo, they can take out the birthday cake and tuck it back in. Um, let's see here. So when I'm adding things onto these pockets, I am going to use foam squares. This one says best day ever. And tucking it right there. There is a package of layered banner stickers, birthday themes. We've got congrats, happy birthday, happy day, congratulations, hooray. So these would also work for graduation. A work promotion, you could make somebody a box for that. Um, but since this is a birthday box, I'm going to pull the happy birthday one and stick it right here. I don't want to cover the rainbows. See how there's a couple of rainbows printed on this paper. So depending on where you cut the pattern paper from, I don't want to cover up the rainbows. So I'm going up in between. So just be mindful of that when you're placing your embellishments. Okay. Uh, let's see, where did I have this one? So on some white space? Okay. Uh, the last thing I want to show you is utilizing white space in your photos. So this is a larger photo that I printed at home. Once I find it. It's a photo of my daughter in front of some flowers at the zoo. And you can see how she's in this the left two thirds of the photo and the right third is pretty much empty. And so when it comes to embellishing and adding photos or adding um, like titles or subtitles or embellishments, you can go ahead and cover up the parts of the photo that aren't essential. Oops. On there. And then, um, if it bothers you to have the photo covering up this notch, I believe, let me see, I think it's a one inch. Well, it's a three quarter. If you have a three quarter inch circle punch, you can repunch through that notch right there. Okay, my friends, that, those are all my tips that I have right now. I'm sure I could come up with more. I'm sure you guys have some awesome tips and tricks for decorating these explosion boxes. I would love to see what you make. So when you share these on Instagram or social media, be sure to tag me and Michaels. You can find all of these supplies at Michaels. This video, oh, there, there I am. <laughs> this video will be on the Michaels YouTube channel this week. So if you joined in late, you can rewatch. And if there's a step where I went too fast, you can rewatch and make sure you get it. I hope you've had fun and I will see you again. Let me see if there's any other questions that I might have missed. Anybody have any last minute questions? Thank you, thank you. You guys are so awesome. Okay, well, if you do have any other questions, you can reach out to me on Instagram, email, my blog, Facebook. I'm, I'm all over all of those things. And I try to reply as quick as I can. I appreciate each and every one of you. And I hope you have a happy scrappy day.